Peaches, peaches, and peaches. So what do you do with a bunch of peaches? You make peach butter, of course. So if that sounds fun, keep watching. Hey y'all, it's April with my crazy creative life and thanks for stopping by. So as the intro stated in today's video, we are making peach butter and then we wanna can that peach butter. So if that sounds good to you, then just stick around. Okay, I know it's probably hard to see there, but I've got three pounds of peaches. They are clean, I have washed them, and I'm not gonna blanch them and peel them. You don't really have to with peach butter, you can. That's kind of just a preference. Okay, next what I'm doing is peeling my peaches. You just slice it down the center from the top to the bottom. You go that direction. So you slice it from the top down. Then you do a little twist. And it should, it should keep like your stone on one side and then it frees the other one. I'm just going to continue to slice up these peaches and put them in my blender. Now, some people, I've read several, several recipes. Some people's preference was to put the peaches in the blender first, get it pureed up, and then transfer it to your crock pot. Some people were saying start it off in your crock pot, then transfer it to either a blender or use an immersion blender. I think I decided to do it this way, so I'm going to puree everything. I'm going to chop up my peaches, put my liquid and my sugar and my spices in, and we'll, and I'll, be, I'll meet you right back here in a minute. Next, I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice to this. It should be equivalent to about one medium-sized lemon. If you plan on canning this, then you have to use bottled lemon juice. You cannot use a lemon. So if you're not going to can these, then don't worry about it. If, but if you're going to can them, you have to use bottled lemon juice. So it's two tablespoons of lemon juice. And I'm going to throw in, I had picked and washed some mint. Mint is supposed to be pretty good with um, peaches. So I'm going to throw some mints in there. I had to add a half a cup of water because it wasn't blending down good. But once we get it blended down, then I'm going to add my spices to it and transfer it over to my crock pot. I'm going to start off with three fourths cup of brown sugar, three fourths cup of white sugar. If it's not sweet enough at the end, then I'll add more. Three fourths cup of white sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon, half teaspoon of nutmeg, half teaspoon of salt, preferably pink Himalayan or the Redmond Real, one eighth teaspoon of each ground cloves, ground ginger, ground cardamom, teaspoon of vanilla, half teaspoon of almond extract. Pop the lid back on. Go in there and scrape that down. I know it's, you can't really see it good. I'm going in here and I'm scraping down the sides and those spices that kind of got stuck to the glass there on the side. And my blender, it's an instant pot blender. You can actually cook soup in this thing, uh, but it does that, it pulsates, so it's weird. So if you ever get an instant pot blender, don't be alarmed when it, it doesn't just blend straight through. It, it, it'll blend and pause and blend. And I guess it's so it can let the bigger chunks fall back down. So it can blend those up, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's blend a little bit more. Okay, see what we got here. You can you can't even see that that handful of mint up there in there is even in it, and that's optional. I can't remember if I said that or not. That mint's optional. Um, and then the skins, you just see a little bit of darker. I don't even know if you can see that. You can see just a little bit of the peachier colored flecks in it. And you might see a little bit of that green, I guess, uh, green flecks from the mint. But anyway, so I'm going to give it a taste test. And if I think it tastes okay, then I'm going to pour it in my crock pot. Okay, let's see. I 
ended up having to add a half a cup of each brown sugar and white sugar to it. So that made it a total of one and one fourth cup of brown sugar, one and one fourth cup of white sugar. So in total, it's got two and a half cups of sugar in it. So if you don't have one or the other, I'm sure it'd be fine. You could substitute one out. It's just that brown sugar has a little bit of that molasses taste to it. It is in my crock pot. I've already got it on. I've got it on high. I've got it on high for six hours, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it. You wanna go in and stir it every so often. If um, most of the moisture should come out of mine where I stick the probe in, like if I was cooking meat, most of the moisture, excess moisture should come out of that vent in mine. But if yours doesn't have a vent, you can take like chopsticks or wooden spoons or something, lay them across, turn it this way you can see, lay them across this way, put your lid on top, and then it will hold that up and help that excess moisture release. So I'm gonna cook it, like I said, four to six hours, stir it occasionally when it's thick enough to where I think we would like the consistency, then I'm going to can it. And there's not much to can in it. I'll meet you back here when we go to can. We went to church tonight, so I didn't have time to can these. And I just took the peach butter and I brought it out here in my fridge out in the garage and I'm gonna keep it here overnight. I'm hoping tomorrow to be able to take it back out, warm it back up and then can it. And so I will meet you back hopefully tomorrow. So this is the next day and I've kind of got my setup ready. I'm not using my big water bath canner. I actually just using a pot with a lid uh, in the back there. That's my normal setup with my, my flats and my funnel and ladle and all of that. And then I just took the the peach butter out and I'm warming it up is all I'm doing there. I'm not really cooking it, just warming it back up. As you seen there, I had to switch pots because the other one wasn't working. I, I couldn't find the lid, so I ended up getting my Dutch oven out. So anyway, uh, I'm getting ready to get started on canning and filling the jars of this peach butter. So I'm just emptying the water out of my jars from the Dutch oven that I've got on the stove and bring them over to my counter. And this just kind of shows everyone, if you don't have a water bath canner, you can can anything that requires water bath canning with just a pot and a lid if you don't have a water bath canner. But anything that needs pressure can, that's that's totally different. You can't do that <laughs> without a pressure canner. Okay, so here we go, we're getting started. I'm just gonna ladle the warm peach butter into the warm jars. And you want one fourth inch head space. And now I'm just taking my little Pokey Joe thing and I'm stirring around the outer perimeter uh, that's right next to the, the actual glass. And then I go in the middle and I kind of stir that. The purpose behind that is you're wanting to make sure that you're releasing any air bubbles that may be trapped in the bottom. That way it won't prevent possibly your jars not sealing correctly. And now the most important step to make sure that your, that your flats actually seal, you've got to wipe that rim. So I've got a little uh, little bowl with water and vinegar in it. And I just take a paper towel and dip it in there. Take my finger and run around and several times just to make sure that it's all clear. And if that paper towel kind of gets too nasty, then just get another paper towel. It's, you know, no big deal. And then of course it's pretty hot. So I'm having to pick it up with a towel and I'm going to just like I've told you before, if you watched any of my other videos, you're going to just uh, tighten that lid, just fingertip tight. So you're just going to barely, I mean, it's going to be tight enough to hold on, but it's not like super grip tight. I wanted to bring you over a little closer. That way you're looking straight down. I want you to get both views. So here we go. I'm filling it up. My fourth inch headspace. I'm going around that glass. It might be a little hard to see there, but I go around the outer edge and then that center to try to release any air bubbles. And then now I'm going to clean off the rim before I put the flat on. So 
I, I screw it on until it's down. And then I just take my fingers and go whoop. <laughs> also, if you don't have something, that top little lip, um, the top little, I don't even know what to call it, but that top little line that I just showed you, that is your fourth inch headspace. So if you don't have anything to kind of measure, then you know that that very top, the closest to the rim, I mean the closest, yeah, the closest to the rim, that should be your fourth inch headspace. So I'm just going to fill the rest of these up. Now I'm bringing all my jars over, and as you see, I'm just using my Dutch oven. But to be honest, even if I do something that doesn't require a lot of water like this, I still think the next time I'm just gonna go ahead and get out my water bath canner. Cause even though this is a lot smaller and it was hot that day, and I thought, well, maybe using this, it won't put off as much heat or whatever. So that's what made me use that instead of my big water bath canner. But honestly, I think that put out more steam than the water bath canner so i probably won't do this anymore but again if you don't have a water bath canner you can do it with with your pot and lid you want to just water bath can these 15 minutes for those little bitty half pint jars i think they're four ounces but the little bit half pint jars is 15 minutes pint jars 20 minutes quart jars 30 minutes and then always uh look for and i'll try to link it if i can find it i'll try to link it but you want to always go with your altitude here is a picture of a chart based off of your sea level because wherever your sea level is your time of processing will have to increase so there is the guide but i will also leave a link to this guide so now i'll put the lid on it and for me the processing time will be 15 minutes once it is finished, move your pot to the side, take your lid off, let it sit there five minutes before you remove them from the hot water. Some of these I've already, like right there, that one hasn't sealed yet. That one has, and that one has, and that one has not, but it, that's okay. They eventually did seal, but this is, sometimes they'll seal just immediately after you take them out of your water. Then you wanna wrap them up real good in your towel and let them sit for 24 hours. So anyway, there you go. That is some beautiful peach butter. Now, I believe this is the next day and I'm taking all the rings off and I'm going to wash them. And I've just got a little bit of soapy water with a little vinegar in it. And I don't fill the sink full, as you see. Okay, you want to tug at your lid a little bit, your flat, I mean. Make sure it's not coming up, it's sealed. And then you want to press that center button or that center part that is that lets you know it's sealed. Press on it, make sure it's not going to pop back up. And then all I do is just scrub real good around that that flat because sometimes it can seep out a little bit during the canning process, even though they're still sealed. So you just want to make sure you get around that um, that edge really good. Then you're going to wash your your rings really good. You will hear me say to keep your lids off because if something happens and the seal breaks and that flat pops up, if that lid is holding it down, you may not see it or notice it. But if the lid is off, then it's gonna be more obvious. So it's best to keep the lids off. And by lids, I mean rings off, unless you're giving them as a gift. Now, if you're giving them as a gift, then go ahead and put the lid back on for the person that you're giving it to. Now I'm just gonna rinse them off and then set them to the side and then I'll dry them off. So I'm just going to dry them off and then I'm going to write on the flat what it is and the date. And here is our beautiful peach butter in its jar ready to be put up in the counter or ready to be given away or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and become a part of our family. If, uh, if you like the video, if you found it informative at all, please uh, give me a like. And also turn on the notification bell. That way you know when I'm releasing new videos. I've got more Canon videos that's going to be coming out here soon. So I hope you have a blessed day. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. By the way, I will leave in the description box the link for the National Center 
for home preservation. That way you can go there and make sure that you're doing safe canning practices.